Donald J. Trump is a constant drumbeat in our collective consciousness. His drive and unique ability to insert himself into everything in search of attention and notoriety knows no bounds. This allows him to constantly shape the conversation and fight his battles, including legal ones, on terrain he knows well, the papers and the airwaves. There's a theory that the best way to take him on is not through a traditional, tight-lipped special counsel investigation like Robert Mueller's, but by finding someone who knows the battlefield and how to dig a trench. Enter Michael Avenatti, attorney at law. The Sacramento native built a public profile over the last few years trying big dollar cases against corporate behemoths. But it's his prior experience in politics including working at Rahm Emanuel's firm while coming up that has perhaps served him best on his current assignment, representing one Stephanie Clifford, D slash B slash a Stormy Daniels, in her case against President Donald Trump and his certified brain genius of a lawyer, Michael Cohen. Nominally, the lawsuit seeks to void a non-disclosure agreement Clifford signed just before the election in which Cohen paid her $130,000 out of a Delaware-based LLC he set up in exchange for her silence about an alleged affair with the president. But the suspicion is that it's become about a whole lot more including some of Cohen's other dealings with that LLC, known as Essential Consultants. Avenity is harnessing the same forces as his opponent, the President of the United States, working a thirsty media for the coverage he needs in a titanic public relations battle against one of the all-time consumers of oxygen. We at Esquire can always appreciate the introduction of an exciting new character to the national drama. He's a staple of late-night monologues, a lightning rod for the enraged mega-faithful, and an emerging talisman of the hashtag resistance movement despite his expressed reluctance. In a fight against a man who is truly everywhere, Avenity is, at the very least, in a great many places at once. The spotlight has also brought scrutiny on Avenity, and a court's $10 million judgment against him last week in a dispute with an ex employee at his former firm has seen him answering some unwanted questions. So, too, did a New York Times report Friday suggesting Avenity sought funding for the Daniels case from networks of Democratic donors. In contrast to his previous claims they did not seek money from major donors to avoid politicizing the case. That last part has always been inevitable as has some of his response to the negative coverage after all, the guy knows the battlefield. If you gaze long into the abyss, and all that. Still, Avenity remains one of the great thorns in the Trumpian side, and seemingly a genuine believer that the behavior of the president and his lawyer with respect to Avenity's own client is of vital public interest. During a series of phone conversations, Avenity talked with Esquire about his setbacks, the case against the president, the president's bully tactics, and a whole lot more. The interview has been lightly edited and condensed for clarity. The president tweets at everyone who crosses him. Why hasn't he tweeted at you? He can't handle a direct confrontation with me. He knows that I'll hand him his ass. So you think he's afraid of you? I do. And I think he should be. How do you think he chooses his targets then? He chooses targets that he perceives to be weak. Like most bullies. What do all the president's pardons this week say about his attitude towards the law? He has no respect for the rule of law. He's lived his entire life as if he is above the rule of law, and you've seen that belief manifest itself in the way that he has conducted himself, including by way of his use of pardons. Do you think the New York Times report today contradicts what you'd previously said, that you hadn't sought out funding from Democratic networks? Well, first of all, what the New York Times is reporting never happened. To be clear. We've turned down over $200,000 from Republican donors looking to harm the president. And we never stated that we had not sought the money. Although, we haven't sought the money, just to be clear about that. So you're saying it's factually incorrect that you sought it out? We did not seek out the money, we've turned down over $200,000 from Republican donors. It's a bunch of nonsense. All the money that we have raised has been raised by crowd justice. And that was always your intent, or would you have accepted some of these donor networks money to begin with? No, that was always our intent. 
What does this new audio of Cohen threatening a reporter say about how he and his client did business? It's disgraceful. The word choice and hearing the actual audio recording is very powerful in that it gives you insight into how Michael Cohen conducted himself when representing Mr. Trump. Remember, this is how he conducted himself when speaking to a reporter, that he knew could report on the conversation. Imagine the type of thuggish tactics and language that Michael Cohen would have used on behalf of Mr. Trump when he was talking to somebody that wasn't a reporter. Did you identify early on that this case would be fought in the press? What brought you to that conclusion? I did identify early on that this was going to be a two-front war. It's a very unusual case in that regard, especially because of the high stakes involved in it, as well as the parties involved. Those stakes have only grown exponentially with each passing week as it relates to the disclosure of information concerning Michael Cohen, essential consultants, Mr. Trump's role, and knowledge as it relates to the NDA, etc.